Tonight's teaching is called Behold the Kingdom of God. And there is misunderstanding about the Kingdom of God. So many times we look at the Kingdom of God as a, uh, a place. Sometimes we look at it as a, uh, a tangible or intangible. There's, there's a lot of people that say uh, certain things about the Kingdom of God. You know, and I want to share with you the importance of understanding the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? How do we enter the kingdom of God? How do we maintain the kingdom of God? Because the kingdom of God is in three dimensions. There is the kingdom of God, which is in a man. There's the kingdom of God on earth and there's the kingdom of God of the heavens or the eternal. There's a three-dimensional realm of the kingdom of God. In a man, on earth, and in the heavens. Representing eternity. In a man, on earth, an eternal kingdom. Amen? I want to share a couple of things which is important because there is a lot of confusion in it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let's go to Matthew 3. Matthew chapter 3. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In verse 1, In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Wow. Now we know that in the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now understand this. I guess we better go to 1 John so you get this. 1 John, chapter 5, I believe. Hallelujah. Okay, 1 John, chapter 5, and verse 6. 1 John, chapter 5, verse 6. <clears throat> Is everybody there? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is what? Truth. Truth. The Spirit bears witness of all things. Nothing is done without the Spirit. The Lord said, it's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that digests the Word. It's the Holy Spirit that convicts you. It's the Holy Spirit that gives you counsel, correction, and direction. It's the Holy Spirit. Nothing is done without the Holy Spirit. Now look at in verse 7. For there are, are three that bear witness in where? Heaven. heaven. The Father, the Word, and the what? And the Holy Spirit. Remember I've used this diagram before. If you were to put this in chronological order, you'd put the Father at top, the Word, then the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the Holy Spirit is the bottom or the foundation there. And that's in heaven. Then it says, and there are three that bear witness on earth. And what's the first one? The spirit. Why? Because it's the spirit that makes a connection between the natural and the spirit realm. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one another. So the kingdom of God, they agree one another. It's the same thing. There's the kingdom of God in man. There's the kingdom of God on earth. And there's the eternal kingdom. They agree with one another. Does everybody understand it? So in, in the word, you're going to find, sometimes they're going to say the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. But they agree, don't they? They're actually one, but they're actually in three different dimensions. Just like water. All right? You can take water and you can freeze it, can't you? It can be liquefied and it can also be steam. But water is still water. It's just set off in three dimensions, isn't it? One dimension is mist or steam. The other dimension is solid. And the other one is liquefied. 
but it's still the same identical thing, isn't it? All right? Praise God. Now, um, let's go to John 3. Hallelujah. John chapter 3. Quick, simple teaching. John chapter 3. Wherever the Holy Ghost leads us in the scriptures, praise God. We want to be led. And um, um, verse 3. Let's read this together. Jesus answered and said to him, he was talking to Nicodemus, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now what if he said what? See the kingdom of God. Unless one is born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now let's go a little further. In verse 5. And Jesus answered, and he said what? Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So he's given us two different things here, didn't he? He says, man, you've got to be born again to not only see the kingdom of God, but you must be born again of, he says, of what? He gives the example, water and Spirit to enter the kingdom of God. So we see that there's a difference between seeing the kingdom of God and entering the kingdom of God. Is everybody with me? All right, remember I share with you there's, there's other those dimensions of the kingdom of God. Now, um, let's go to John 18. John 18, while we're in John. Now, the bottom line to this, he says, is you must be born again. Does everybody understand that? Before you can even see the kingdom of God, or enter the kingdom of God. Unless you are born again, ain't nothing gonna happen. Alright? You must be born again. Now watch. In verse 8, in John chapter 18, John 18. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And uh, let's see here. Uh, verse 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is what? Not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would what? Well, they would fight. So that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now my kingdom is not, but know that my kingdom is what? Not, not from here. So we're talking about a kingdom from another realm, right? But it's in a three-dimensional realm. <laughs> Three dimensions, the kingdom, the kingdom of God in man, the kingdom of God on earth, and the eternal kingdom of God. And they all bear witness to one another. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again to see the kingdom. You must be born again to enter the kingdom. So somebody must be born again. First of all, he says, by water and by spirit, didn't he? Now, we know that John came speaking, saying, you must repent for behold, the kingdom of God is at hand, or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You must repent. In fact, in Matthew 6, let's go there. Why do you think John was saying, behold, the kingdom of God is at hand? Anybody know? Because the kingdom of the Spirit was coming. Jesus Christ was coming. Jesus was already here. The kingdom of God is at hand. Is at hand. Amen. He was out preaching, Behold, the kingdom of God, while Jesus was on the earth, wasn't he? <laughs> so he was actually here. But the, the, the fullness of the kingdom, heaven, they said, he said, you must be born again to see or born again to enter by the Spirit. So the fullness of the manifestation was going to come when Jesus was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because he was saying, Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Because he knew what was going to happen, didn't he? Does everybody understand that? He knew it was going to happen. Now, if you go to Matthew 6, hallelujah, Matthew 6 and verse 9, Jesus says, In this manner, 
in this manner. Not that this is the prayer. He says in this manner. In other words, this is a guideline to prayer. Therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your what? Kingdom come. And your what? Will be done where? On earth as it is in heaven. So we see that he wants his kingdom to come on earth, doesn't he? Amen. And then he explains, give us our give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. In other words, forgive us our sins. He's talking about maintaining the kingdom of God. As we forgive others or our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one who is Satan. For yours is the what? Kingdom and the what? Power and the glory. And they all bear witness to one another. The kingdom, the power, and the glory all bear witness to one another. Does everybody understand that? That's what the kingdom of God is. Hallelujah. Now, why we're in here. Um, let's go to Luke 12. We know that the kingdom is not of this world. Hallelujah. Because we know that we're pilgrims passing through, right? In Luke chapter 12. To God be the glory. And uh, let's see here. Let's go to verse... 30. Luke 12, verse 30. For all these things the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knows that you need these things. Things of the world, doesn't he? And he tells us what in 31. But seek the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. What? He knows what we need, doesn't he? So he says, first seek the kingdom of God. Now he's seeking the kingdom. Who are you seeking? The Lord. He's a representation of the kingdom of God, isn't he? Now watch. 32. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's what? Good pleasure to what? Get, give you the kingdom. So he wants to give you the kingdom, doesn't he? Hallelujah. Oh. <laughs> so it's his good pleasure, isn't it? Okay. And um, Luke, while we're in Luke, let's go to Luke 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. In verse 18. Now we know that Jesus came out of the wilderness filled with the Holy Ghost. He went into the synagogue and the first words he preached was, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. He's talking about preaching the kingdom of God. Does everybody understand that? He's preached. What's the first? Who's the first one he introduces? Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? John was preaching before Jesus saying, Behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus is now following John. Now Jesus is preaching the kingdom of God. Does everybody understand that? Hallelujah. Okay. Let's well, while we're there, let's go to uh, verse forty-three, somewhere around there. Start at verse forty-two. Now, when it was day, he departed. Jesus departed, and went into a deserted place. And the crowd sought him and came to him, and tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said to them, "I must preach the what kingdom of God." to the other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. What was he preaching? The kingdom of God. What was he introducing? The Holy Spirit. Does everybody understand that? It goes back to when he told Nicodemus, you must be born again. 
What was he doing? He was preaching how to enter the kingdom of God. He was preaching how to receive the kingdom of God. He was preaching how to see the kingdom of God. Does everybody understand that? Remember, the, the word Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, isn't he? He doesn't change. He is that which was of the past, which is of the present, and which is of the future. The kingdom is a representation, same parallel, past, present, and future. When you and I were born again, we entered the kingdom of God. There's a present kingdom of God manifesting in us, but there's another present kingdom of God that's going to be manifest during the millennium, isn't there? And then there's going to be an eternal kingdom of God after the millennium. Does everybody get it? Okay, now. Let's go to Luke 17. Luke chapter 17. Verse 20. Let's read this together. In verse 20. Now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Now understand something. Even the Pharisees knew that the kingdom of God had to come. They knew, that through, they knew that through the Old Testament, that the kingdom of God was coming. They knew it. And so they were asking Jesus when the kingdom of God was coming. Jesus was trying to explain to them, listen, it ain't time for this, but I want you to know something, that the kingdom of God is already here. You're looking for another kingdom to come. What I'm trying to tell you is that the kingdom of God is here, and you need to be born again so that the kingdom of God can be manifest in your life. Amen? Now look at in verse 21. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Within you. Now, hallelujah. We're going back to this. Well, how do we enter the kingdom of God? Jesus said you must be born again. Now, this is where we have that other teaching of the difference between saved and born again. Someone who's saved, the kingdom of God is not manifesting in them. Only someone who's born again. Now, even though you're born again, you can always go back to that state of being saved and the kingdom of God is not manifesting in you. Does everybody understand that? It's like going into the Holy of Holies and getting pushed all the way back to the outer court to where you were in the born again state. Now you're in that saved state. Amen? Okay. So, <laughs> so we must understand that he's talking about the kingdom of God manifesting in me and you. Now, turn to Romans 14. Romans 14. Hallelujah. And verse 16. Everybody there? Mm -hmm. Therefore do not let your good be spoken of as what? Evil. Let's read the next verse. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but what? Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. That, so the kingdom of God is in the Holy Spirit, isn't it? The kingdom of God is not manifesting unless you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Go to 1 Corinthians 4. First Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 20. Let's read this together. For the kingdom 
of God is not in word, but in what? Power. 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 Power to what? Power to say no to temptation. Power to cast out devils. Power to, power to walk uprightly. Power to have dominion over your flesh. Power. That's the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Power to be obedient. Power. Power. Hallelujah. Power. And Mark 9, 1. And Mark 9. Hallelujah. And Mark 9. Is everybody there? Verse 1. And Jesus said to them, what? Let's read it together. I surely I say to you that there are some standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom of God present with, with power. Do you understand that? With what? Power. That's the kingdom of God. Power. We've got to understand that Jesus was known as the Christ. Remember when he, when he asked Peter and he said, listen, Peter, who do they say that I am? And Peter got the revelation, said, you're the Christ. And Jesus said, man, no flesh and blood told you that, but my Father in heaven. We talked about that earlier today, right? And he told Peter, he said, Peter, from that revelation that you got, that I am the Christ, because Christ means anointed one, which means power. <laughs> I'm going to build my church. So the church, the kingdom of God in the church, in man right now is a representation of power. No power, no kingdom. If you and I are not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, we're not walking in the kingdom. The kingdom of God is not manifesting in us. Does everybody understand that? The kingdom of God is not manifesting. Power. Glory to God. Now, um, let's go to Luke 11. Power. You know, the world is looking for the kingdom of God and don't even know that. They're looking to see power. They want to see power in an individual. They want to see power the power to change someone. The power. Power. That's the kingdom of God. Power. You know, man is looking for power. They're all looking for the kingdom of God. They're looking for wealth to bring them power. They're looking for fame to bring them power. They're looking for recognition and acknowledgement to bring them power. But they're looking for the kingdom of God to be manifest in them. Remember, we just read that the kingdom of God is within us within us. Hallelujah. Um, in Luke eleven seventeen. 17. Now, now, let's start back at 14 so we can get a full understanding. And he, Jesus, was casting out a demon and it was, and it was, a, it was mute. So it was when the demon had gone out that the mute spoke and the multitudes marveled. But some of them said, He cast out demons by Beelzebub, the ruler of the demons. And who's the ruler of the demons? Satan. Others testing him sought from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, then by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. 
said, when he get there, <laughs> surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Cast out <laughs> demons. The kingdom of God has come upon you. Go to Mark 16. Hallelujah. And Mark 16. And verse 16. He who believes and is baptized, of course he's saying baptized with the Holy Ghost, will be saved. But he, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe or follow. Why? Because the kingdom of God is manifesting in them. If you're following the kingdom of God, you're following Jesus who was the manifestation of the kingdom of God, right? The kingdom of God is going to be manifesting in you. And he says, and in my name they are what? Cast out demons. Sounds like what we were just talking about, what Jesus did. He said, Behold, the kingdom of God is upon you. I come casting out devils in the, with the finger of God. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Wonderful thing. You get a language of the kingdom. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Hallelujah. That's the power, isn't it, of the kingdom of God? power. Go to Acts 1.8. Now we know it's the Holy Spirit because it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that builds the kingdom of God. It's the Holy Spirit. Nothing is done without him. Acts, let's start at verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he, Jesus, commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. Why? He wanted the kingdom of God to be manifest in them. He said, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And they were missing it. <clears throat> it wasn't about restoring the kingdom of Israel. It was about restoring man to God. All man. And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times and seasons for which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive what? Power with, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me. How can you be a witness to Jesus without power? Because Jesus is a representation of the manifestation of the kingdom of God. Amen? Now, like I said before, there's a difference between, between being saved and born again. And you can fall back into that saved state. Hallelujah. So, does everybody understand that the kingdom of God manifesting in me and you is a representation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, it's our responsibility to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. It's our responsibility. If Jesus went around casting devils out by the finger of God, well, you need to cast them out too. Amen. You need to cast them off yourself. You need to do spiritual warfare. Why? Because the Bible tells us that the kingdom is taken by <coughs> violence. In other words, you've got to take it. You've got to protect the kingdom of God, don't you? Things are taken. How are they taken? In the spirit realm. When the devil's tormenting you, you just can't go, oh, you got to turn around and kick butt. Jesus said, I did not come to bring you peace. I came to bring you a sword. And if you don't learn to use that sword, you're going to get beat. The devil is going to keep unplugging you so that the power of the Holy Spirit will not manifest in you. And that's what he does. He comes and cuts that plug. And he puts all these goofy thoughts in your mind. All these goofy thoughts in your heart. 
then you begin to blame everybody else for your problems. Well, then you begin to blame God for your problems. <laughs> That's the devil. Remember the seed of the serpent in your flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go to Luke 10. chapter 10. The kingdom of God. Hallelujah, Daddy. Luke chapter 10 and verse 8. Jesus is sending out his disciples and he says, whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as they set before you. And what? Heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Hmm. <laughs> the kingdom of God has come near to you. Go to verse 16. He who hears you hears me, and he who rejects you rejects me. And he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. Ooh. So we don't want to reject what the Spirit is saying, do we? We don't want to reject the things of the kingdom of God. We want to yield to the Holy Spirit. Now, in Mark 7, am I going too fast? Mark 7. Jesus was explaining Uh, and, and he's explaining here in, in, Mark, in verse 11. He says, But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is Corbin, that is a gift to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother, making the word of God of no effect through your what? Traditions which you have handed down, and many such things you do. And what is he saying? They've lost morality. They've lost respect. Their traditions actually removed them out of the place of respect. Remember where Jesus, uh, well, Jesus loved harassing them, I'm telling you, it was powerful. You know, when he healed on the Sabbath and so forth, he was trying to show them that they were caught up in their own traditions. Sometimes your traditions and our traditions can prevent the flow of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says your traditions nullify the Word. The Word is not manifesting in us. Sometimes the things that we've come from, we're always trying to go back to our traditions. You know, I was brought up in a very traditional family. In fact, when I was a young child, I wasn't allowed to sleep over American people's homes. Only if they were Italian. I mean, I was taught, I was brought up in racialism and everything else. Just, if you were an Italian, you were no good. I mean, it was a terrible thing. I didn't understand. I mean, and I had such good friends that were black, Chinese, Irish. It didn't matter. And I had good friends, and you know, and it was hard for me. But because of those traditions of my family, of the traditions there I was brought up with, it certainly wouldn't allow the Word of God or, or the presence of God to manifest in my life until those traditions were broke, until I was willing to obey what God wanted and not what man wanted. 
Now I'm no longer Italian. I'm Christ-like. My blood no longer runs from my family. It runs from the throne room of God. I'm not a part of anything on this earth anymore. In fact, the kingdom of God is not of this earth, so neither am I. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, to God be the glory. Now, I want to, sh well, we understand that the kingdom of God manifesting in me and you is in power with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that you tell them by their fruits. You'll know whether the kingdom of God is manifested in you. If you don't, then carry a recorder around with you and listen to yourself for a day. Or go up and ask someone, do you think the kingdom of God is manifesting in me? <laughs> They'll know. Believe me, if you're blinded to it, everybody else knows. Amen? I remember a preacher saying one day, you know, he missed a day of prayer. And his wife knew. He missed two days of prayer. His friends knew. He missed three days of prayer. The world knew. <laughs> Why? Because, you know, if you're blinded to it, everybody else isn't. <laughs> I mean, come on, we have a tendency to people see people's fruits. You can't help but see it. That's why we need to get before the mirror ourselves and see our own fruits. If the kingdom of God is not manifesting in our life, then you know what? We need to go seek the kingdom of God. We need to go take the time and get delivered. We need to go take that time. Look, at the only reason why people... The manifestation of the kingdom of God is not manifesting in people's lives because they're not going and taking time with God. Remember we talked earlier today about making contact. You must get revelation every day. Revelation of what? Revelation that God heard you. Not writing a letter to Santa Claus and hoping, uh-oh, did he hear me or didn't he? <laughs> you must have revelation that he heard, because if he heard, let me tell you something, something comes back. When you get on the phone and you call somebody, right, usually you get a response back, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's revelation. If there's no response back, that ain't no revelation. In fact, that's like a, either a busy signal <laughs> or somebody hung up on you. <laughs> Bad connection, wrong number. You know, so what we need to have is revelation, right? Revelation brings us that encouragement, doesn't it? And in revelation, you're going to get counsel, correction, and direction. We must have revel. That's why it's difficult getting revelation while you're driving to work. Because everything else is interfering. That's why it's hard to get revelation sometimes at work. But if you're staying in the Spirit, you'll get revelation anywhere. Does everybody understand that? But if you haven't got in the Spirit the first thing in the morning, well, how are you going to get it later on? You're going to be hindered. So revelation is a representation of response of something, getting understanding. So if you're walking in the kingdom of God, you're walking in revelation. Does everybody understand that? Not only that, you're seeing things change. Now remember in John 3, 3 through 5, he says, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God and to enter the kingdom of God. Now we know that that's kind of like a, a two-phase understanding because we can see the kingdom of God manifesting in us, can't we? Or in somebody else. And we enter the kingdom of God. Now go to uh, Galatians 5. Galatians 5. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And verse 19. And we know this. It says, The works of the flesh are evident. Man, are they. <laughs> I mean, there ain't no doubt that the works of the flesh are not evident. 
which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will what? Not inherit the kingdom of God or enter the kingdom of God. Does everybody understand that? Now he's talking about an eternal part. Does everybody get it? Not just a present part, but an eternal part. Now, um, I want you to look at... Hmm. Remember we shared that the kingdom of God is, has three dimensions. In man, on earth, and eternal. In man, on earth, and eternal. It says that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if, even if you're practicing those things, the kingdom of God, first of all, is not manifesting in you now. If you continue to practice such things, you're not going to even enter the kingdom of God. So you even got to worry about, you know, <laughs> the kingdom of God manifesting then. Is everybody with me? So if you're practicing such things now, without quick repentance, without turning, turning away and getting back and allowing the kingdom of God to manifest in you now, how do you expect to enter the kingdom of God? It's not going to be easy. He says you must be born again. Now, now watch this. Uh, go to 1 Corinthians 15. Now, I'm sharing these scriptures before I explain certain things. i got to at least give you an understanding here through the Word. 1 Corinthians 15. <coughs> Is everybody there? Hallelujah. And verse 50, let's read this together. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit cor corruption. Amen. So flesh and blood can't enter the kingdom of God, can it? Hmm. <laughs> So that means we must be born again to enter this kingdom of God. Right? Okay. But when we talked about there's a difference between saved and born again. And we don't want to go back to the saved state while we're walking in the born again state. Amen. And we certainly don't want to keep falling back to that safe, safe state because we've done that before. Amen. You know, we've been walking the kingdom of God is manifesting. We see peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. And that's one of the inward senses of the kingdom of God manifesting in you. And you, do you have the peace of the Lord? Amen. Peace, joy, and righteousness. Hallelujah. There you are. Well, when those start getting out of line, you know the kingdom of God's not manifesting in you. Something is wrong. Now, the peace and the joy are the inward. The righteousness is about the outward. Because if you're not peace within, and you don't have the joy of the Lord within, and in fact the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. That means power, doesn't it? Then something's wrong. And if you ignore that, if you ignore that little simple sense, that little inclination that something's wrong there, and you put it under the rug, it's going to build so great. Because there's a hook in the jaw. It's going to build greatly. And you're going to find yourself tormented and fall in trouble or fall. Backslide big time. Amen? Now listen. Um, we know that flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. 
We know that it, the kingdom of God is not just in word, but in power. You know, and like I said before, the world is looking for power. We know that it's God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom of God. We know that the kingdom of God, Jesus said, is within us. We know that Jesus said, I come and cast out devils with the finger of God, then you know that the kingdom of God is upon you. The Bible tells us that, you know, we will speak in tongues, cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, and so forth. We know that's the manifestation of the kingdom of God. When I've gone to people and I said, I mean, you can tell whether somebody's been born again or not. You know. Ask them how they're doing. They grumble and complain. You know it. Something's not right. If they invite you to the bar, you certainly know it. <laughs> if they're cursing, you know it. Right? That's why God brings people in that are saved so that they can be birthed so that the kingdom of God can manifest in their lives. Now, we know that there is another realm of entering the kingdom of God. The Bible says that no flesh and blood can enter the kingdom of God. We know that there, our millennium is coming up, even though that the world's millennium has already started. And our millennium, the Bible tells us, and let's go to 1 Thessalonians, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Chapter 4. Verse 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will raise first. Rise first. Then he, then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. That's another kingdom, isn't it? That's another realm. And the Bible says that flesh and blood cannot enter it, so we're going to have a glorified body. We must be changed. That's another part of the kingdom, isn't it? And the Bible says that we will return with the Lord on the earth, doesn't it? And we will reign here in the millennium. But our true home will be in the new Jerusalem that will be in the heavenlies, won't it? Okay, so we'll be going to and fro. So we see that there's a whole other kingdom, isn't it? The millennium is a representation of the kingdom on earth. Is everybody with me? So we see here that the kingdom of God is already manifesting in man. In fact, the word says that do you not know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? So what does he say? He says, come out from among them and be separate. Do not touch what is unclean. Then I will be your father and you will be my sons and daughters. So we see that even maintaining the kingdom of God, we must come out. We must be separate. Now I'm going to go back again to where Jesus was telling Nicodemus that he had to be born again. You become born again by the baptism of the Holy Ghost for the kingdom of God to manifest in you. And for the kingdom of God to maintain manifestation in you, you maintain that born again state. Those who are not born again, the kingdom of God is not manifesting. They are saved. Now, when somebody dies, let's say you go to the hospital, they, know, they don't know the Lord. They come to the Lord, they die. Right? They go home. Well, wait a minute. The Bible says you must be born again. They are born again on the way. Because no flesh and blood can enter. So why wait till you die to be born again, man? <laughs> Does everybody get it? Why wait to die to be born again? When you can be born again and the, and the kingdom of God is manifesting in your life right here on earth. Jesus said, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus said, I give you the keys to whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. So the kingdom of God is manifesting in me and you right now, if we'll allow him to. 
of walking in the power. Does everybody understand that? Now, people who die, they still must be born again. And they get born again on their, as they die. Does everybody get it? They die. But why wait to die to become born again? When you can be born again now and maintain that state. Now, we will return with Jesus on the earth. In fact, turn to Matthew. Hallelujah. Oh, to God be the glory. Uh, let's see here. Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 5. Hallelujah. Is everybody understanding this? What is the kingdom of God? Well, there's three realms of the kingdom of God. In, in chapter 5 and verse 3, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Those are humble, aren't they? For theirs is the kingdom of what? Oh, the Lord's explaining this. If you're poor in spirit, you have a humble spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the what? The earth. But it's all the same, isn't it? As long as you're in the kingdom, it doesn't matter where you're inher inheriting, does it? <laughs> blessed are those who thirst and hunger for, for, uh, blessed, for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall attain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is explaining how to maintain the kingdom of heaven. In other words, as long as we maintain this, there's another realm coming. So we see that we are going to inherit the earth. <clears throat> right? Okay, let's go to Revelation. Revelation. Uh, let's see. Here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Um, Revelation twenty. Revelation 20 and verse 1. Glory to God. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for what? A thousand. a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished, but after these things he must be released for a little while. Now, let's go to verse 4. And I saw the thrones, and they that sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for what? Oh, well, where did they reign with him for a thousand years? On the earth. Does everybody get it? Mm -hmm. This is the millennium. So walking in the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God being manifest in you, and entering the kingdom of God, you will be reigning with Christ for a thousand years on the earth. That is the second part in it well, I was just talking about the first part is the kingdom of God in man the kingdom of God on earth and then there's the eternal kingdom of God amen you know I hear so many people and I've heard this preached and it really grieved my spirit and they're saying man unless you are baptized in the Holy Ghost you cannot enter the kingdom of God and they're, and they're saying if, unless you're baptized in the Holy Ghost you're not saved and that's not true 
everybody get it? I'm like, wait a minute. Where are you preaching this from, man? It's because they're, and it's amazing. They have the Holy Ghost. And, but there's still that spirit of error there. Because if you're saved, when you die, you still enter the kingdom of God as long as you're right with God. You get born again on the way. Amen? Now, for the kingdom of God to manifest in your life here on earth, you've got to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. All right? And those who are born again, and even those who um, got saved on that deathbed, will come and reign with Christ for a thousand years. Because they'll be born again. Does everybody get it? But who wants to wait till you die? <laughs> We want to walk in the kingdom of God and bring as many souls as we can home. Because what you're doing right now on earth positions you for eternity. Those who die in their deathbed will receive no reward. Amen. All of those children that were aborted didn't receive a reward. Hmm. I mean, I don't know what kind of classes they go through in heaven or whatever, you know, but I don't know, you know, I, I can't tell you the fullness of what's going on because we don't know. But when it comes down for the crowns and the rewards, they won't be able to get them. Amen? And that's going to position us eternally. Hallelujah. Now, does everybody understand the kingdom of God manifests in you? The kingdom of God on earth, which we will reign for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, let's go to... Uh, uh, 2 Peter. No, 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 let's go to Luke 22. Let's go to Luke 22. Okay. Glory to God. <clears throat> Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, in verse 29, and Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he, and he says to them, I bestow upon you a kingdom, <clears throat> just as my Father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on <laughs> thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now he's talking to the 12 disciples because they are going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, when will that happen? In the millennium. Hallelujah. He will judge them. So he's saying, I bestow a kingdom upon you just like my father bestowed on me. And in this, you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. He's talking to the 12 disciples that he chose. And they will be judging Israel. And that will happen in a millennium. Amen? Okay. Now, let's talk about the eternal. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter one. In verse ten. Oh, this is good. Let's start at verse five. <laughs> Hallelujah. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, 
to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Hallelujah. So he gives us clues here. Insight. Listen. <laughs> Add to your faith virtue. Virtue, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, self-control, perseverance, perseverance, godliness, godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness, love. If you're not walking in those, you're unfruitful and you're short-sighted. So we see that there's an everlasting kingdom, isn't there? And that's that eternal kingdom. Um, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 again. First Corinthians 15 and verse 20. Hallelujah. But now Christ has risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. But each one in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end, when Jesus delivers the kingdom to God the Father, when he puts an end to all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. And that's at the end of the millennium. Okay? Which will be... Now he's going to be turning this kingdom over to the Father. Hallelujah. Let's go to... Uh, 2 Timothy 4. Second Timothy chapter four. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And verse seventeen. The Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of a lion, of the lion. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Go to Revelation 12. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
And I just want to show you something just to come back a little bit. In verse 10 it says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. Now this was the millennium again. I just wanted to back up a little bit. Does everybody understand that? This is the millennium. This is during the tribulation time. He says, now the kingdom of God. I wanted to bring that back because I missed that scripture. And that's the millennium on the earth. Amen? Hallelujah. Now, let's go on. Uh, in chapter 21, in Revelation... Everybody there? In verse 1, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is representation of the eternal kingdom. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Remember, we were it was the kingdom on earth, right? We were talking about during the millennium. After that, it burns up. And a new earth and a new heaven come. Then I, John, saw the holy, uh, holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And we see here that now we've entered in this the eternal realm of the kingdom because everything is new. Amen. Go to verse 22. And I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun of the, of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. So there ain't going to be no power wires running anywhere. The Lamb is its light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and their honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all. By day there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the land's book of life. That's the eternal kingdom realm. Amen. Look at. I mean, I've got a lot on this. I'm not going to go there because I just want to make it plain and simple. Three realms of the kingdom of God. In man, on earth, and eternal. In man, on earth, and eternal. You must be born again to enter them. You must be born again to see them. You must maintain. You must maintain the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. You must maintain a relationship with the Lord. Or you'll fall back from that born again state into that saved state. And like I said, who wants to die in your dead bed to be born again? These people are going to go through tribulation. Does everybody get it? These people are going to be born again during the tribulation. They're going to have to die, aren't they? During the tribulation, because they rejected Jesus. And then all of a sudden, some of them are going to see, wow, they were right. Remember the Bible says that, and, and many will, the Lord said that, and many of you will weep and be tormented because you're going to see the one that you pierced. And they're going to realize, and some of them are not going to take the mark during the tribulation period, and they're going to die because they're going to know that because uh, the, the kingdom of God was preached already, and they know that the rapture, or they might, they might not have believed it, 
or some of them believed it but were not right at that period of time and f fell into a uh, fallen state and missed the rapture, they're going to know and they're not going to receive the mark and they're going to die. But they will be saved. They will not be able to walk in the kingdom of God. They won't have the power of the kingdom of God. They'll have to die. They'll have to hold on. But on their way, they're going to change. They'll be born again then. Amen? Remember, the kingdom of God is not in word or deed, but in power. In power. That's what the kingdom of God is about. You know, you and I could... Uh, somebody could see us and just go, Man, you've changed so much. You tell them, yes. It's the power of God. I got saved and born again. And the kingdom of God is manifesting. Two weeks later, they can see you sitting there smoking or drinking or whatever. And what happened to your kingdom of God manifesting in you? Well, uh, what happened? Lost interest in maintaining the kingdom of God. Got caught up in the affairs of the world. He was a friend with the world as an enemy of God. If your mind is set on the things of the world, you're carnal, and the ways of the flesh are death. The kingdom of God has nothing to do with flesh. Nothing. The Bible says flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. Well, even the kingdom of God here on earth, right now that's manifesting in you, has nothing to do with the flesh either. <laughs> Amen? So does everybody understand the state? Because you know, let me share with you, you're going to come across preaching that's going to tell you you must be born again to enter the kingdom of God, and that they're not incorrect. But people can get saved right on their deathbed and not get baptized in the Holy Ghost and go home. They're going to tell you unless you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're going to hell. That's incorrect. But you know, unless you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost and you have no power, you may end up in hell. <laughs> you know, because the kingdom of God is not manifesting. So it's our responsibility to maintain the power of the Spirit. Our responsibility. So if you've fallen short of that, get plugged back in. Go to the Lord. Lord, Forgive me. Go to the Lord. You got to take time with God. You got to get revelation. That's how you make contact. If you're not making contact, you're not getting revelation and you're backsliding spiritually. Nothing happens in the natural unless you've already backslidden in the spirit. Amen? Check your fruits out. Where's your thoughts? Where's your words? What's happening? Where's your peace? Where's your joy? Where's your righteousness? If they're not manifesting, the kingdom of God is not manifesting, then something is plugging the flow of the Spirit. Unforgiveness, bitterness, hatred, dissensions, whatever it may be. Something that's grieving the Spirit of God from flowing in our life. So that the kingdom of God cannot manifest. We must do everything we can to allow the kingdom of God to manifest. If you're out there working and so forth, you're involved in your job, whatever it may be, a relationship, whatever, when you're married. Listen, man, there's times if things ain't right, you got to just stop everything and go to the Lord. You cannot allow yourself to be sucked in. And the affair. You know, the Lord says, if you're not willing to let go of your family, if you're not willing, hello? to let go of your mom and your dad, your wife, your children, and so forth, and that he is number one, you cannot deny yourself. And that's the bottom line. That means you're not, you're denying Christ and you're acknowledging yourself. The kingdom of God will never manifest in your life until you finally deny yourself and let Christ be manifest. Your family can't save you. Your children, your wives, your mother, your father, none of them can save you and do nothing for you.
only Christ and the power of Christ can. Only the power. We must walk in the power of the anointing of the Holy One. Does everybody get it? you got to have the kingdom of God manifest in you or you're not a witness. Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, give us understanding. And Lord, forgive us for denying you when we've exalted ourselves. Lord, help us to deny ourselves. And Lord, let us not deny the things that are happening in our life right now. But let our eyes be open to what you're trying to show us and tell us. Have mercy upon us, Lord Jesus. And bring us to that place of position where the kingdom of God is manifesting in our lives, that we can bring glory to your name and expand your kingdom in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Hallelujah! Hallelujah.